We will be discussing themes of an adult nature, so this is not suitable for children. Viewer's discretion is advised. Assalamu alaikum guys and welcome to another episode of Smile to Jannah. Smile to Jannah. <laughs> The Quranly app, subscription cheaper than Netflix, encouraging Quran reading, modern, engaging and fun, download it today. Santa Claus, a large father-like figure with a white beard and to some degree I guess to Christians symbolizes a godlike figure. Superman, the man of steel who represents truth, justice and hope. 007, the debonair who is the saviour of the United Kingdom mate who works for the MI6 and then Dumbledore, the greatest wizard in the Harry Potter franchise. Take him! Well it seems that all of them have become a victim to the LGBTQ lobby and Santa Claus is only the latest one. First we heard that Superman's son is bisexual. Dumbledore was marked as gay by JK Rowling. The actor that plays 007 apparently likes hanging out in gay bars. And now Santa Claus, according to a Norwegian advert, shared a kiss with another man in a Christmas advert. You know what, it's clear what the game that's being played here is. And that is they're taking children's inherently good characters Characters that are, let's face it, inherently masculine. They have superpowers. They are looked up to, adored. Their movies watched, their toys played with, magazines bought. And they're taking these things to which a lot of marketing has been done. And then they are just, just converting them. Why? To make it seem normal to us. Look, Superman is homosexual, Dumbledore's homosexual, Bait 007 likes, it's normal mate, it's happening everywhere. So therefore it should be alright. I mean what sort of world are we living in in which people have made their identities their sexuality? We also in the US presidential campaign where Kamala Harris before even starting a speech she's like here's my pronouns mate. Thank you for joining us, How appreciate it. And my pronouns are she, her, and hers. She, her, and hers. Mine too. <laughs> People calling themselves bisexual, homosexual, heterosexual, pansexual. I mean, flaming Nora, mate. If somebody likes pineapple on pizza, it doesn't now mean that on every form he has to write down, yep, a pineapple pizza lover. Before even starting a conversation, yep, just a disclaimer, I identify as a pineapple pizza lover. Like, why are you making these things the center of your life? And then they ask, why does sex matter to God? Well, sex matters to God because you and I matter to God. And because human beings are a product of sex, the process by which a person is made is also sacred as well. He's absolutely right, sir. There should be no limits, mate. Why are you putting limits? Really? Let's look at secular societies. They've also put limits on sex also. Yeah, consent. That's a limit. Not having intercourse with minors. That's a limit. Not having intercourse in public is also a limit. Are you now going to say, why does the government care who you sleep with mate? We should be able to be free to do whatever we want. Because after all, there are no limits, right? All this, do whatever you want as long as it feels good, has its roots in liberalism and atheism. And they in essence propagate, oh we are made from unguided, unconscious, mindless material matter. There is no necessary being that has facilitated all that you can see. So do what you want, except when we tell you not to do it. And because of this cage of materialism, we're seeing that it's just not working. You even got proponents of neo-atheism like Sam Harris, who are now teaching <laughs> meditation online. Good Lord. You even have other atheists like Alain de Botton, who says he wants to enrich the lives of atheists by stealing these practices from religion. 
Yeah, and he admits this in his best-selling book, Religion for Atheists, a non-believer's guide to the uses of religion. And for some of these atheists, because they have no connection with people, no impetus, no reason, no justification, that's why they've started initiatives like Sunday Assembly, where they meet up on Sundays and just sing and just chill out, just so they can have a feeling of, of the community that religion gives to people. And it's not even confined just to our lifestyles. You look into medicine, where science tries to confine the mind and consciousness only to brain activity. And because of that, all our ailments can be solved by popping pills when we know. Well, science calls it the placebo effect, but we know faith, belief, love, relationships, family can also increase healing as well. And now we're seeing sex as being used as just an act. I mean, essentially, we're talking about fluid exchange, right? So, could we just go straight to the sex? The whole spirituality has been taken from it. People abuse it at the wrong time, become bored of it, and relationships break. The family unit breaks down when in reality you're supposed to wait, you're supposed to develop yourself, and then when you're in a committed relationship, this is a sign of your commitment. This is a seal, this is a special gift that you give to the other person. However, here is being treated like an act that can be bought and sold like a transaction. Love is being bought and sold. But love cannot be bought and sold. Sex can. Purity cannot be bought and sold. Yes, a soap can. A home cannot be bought and sold. Yes, a house can. May Allah protect us. Of course, as parents, be very careful with what your child watches. And of course, we're going to be seeing more and more of this. But as soon as you see it, you should have a filtering mentality that you're able to see, decipher, Discuss it as a family so your children and yourselves do not fall into this trap. Let's leave it there, guys. Until next time. Assalamu alaikum.